What's up, Droners? B here with Droner Tech, brought to you by RemotePilot101.com. And today, as I love to always do, we're going to talk about Droner news. So let's get into it. All right, so first off, we're going to start talking about some drone security thing. Ring is a security system that is now starting to implement drones. Looking into, into 2021, they're going to be starting to put out, as part of one of the security features, is they're going to have a docked drone that is able to patrol the house that you have. Now, the way that this works is that you're supposed to walk it around the house so it can learn the waypoints and all that. And obviously it has object avoidance and all that um, to be able to get around the house and make sure that it does it safely. And if it ever sees any problems and it just flies right back to its dock. It has about a five minute, five minute flight time, which probably will get it around most houses unless you're living in a mansion. I find a lot of things really interesting about this drone. Uh, first of all, we live in the future, it's official. Like we have security systems that have indoor drones for your house. Um, the second thing is, is uh, you know, obviously you probably already saw the picture that we put up of what this drone looks like, but you can't tell me that this is what you imagine this look like. Like when I first was reading this article, I didn't see the picture first, I just read the article. And I'm telling you right now that this is the most disappointing image of a drone. Like I guess it makes sense. Like at first I was like, oh, I wish it looked better. But then I looked at it, I was like, practically, of course, uh, you know, like ergonomically, of course, this makes sense. The camera hangs below it. The whole thing docks into it. It has a giant blade guards all around it. So the blades will never touch anything. But it's just like a flying brick. Like it's just not fun. But it's not supposed to be. It's security, I suppose. I don't, man, I'm a drone guy. I like drones and I like how sleek they are. I like all that kind of stuff. This is not that. This is just like, you don't get to fly this at all. It flies itself. It's ugly and it's probably gonna get destroyed by your pets. But I mean, in all honesty, it's actually not too expensive, it's $250. It's an interesting thing, man. I think this could be the start of like what it, like home security systems are gonna really be able to do. Um, I personally would be more interested in an outdoor drone security system instead of an indoor one. I assume this will work better for people that like have multiple homes and just like, I'm not gonna be in my home for an extended period of time and an alarm gets set off. It's like, okay, cool, let me go see what that is in the house. But either way, I'm sure someone's gonna find some kind of use for it outside of the novelty. Right now, it still feels like a novelty. I feel like this is one of those things that people are just like, oh, that welcome to my house of tomorrow. One second, my drone is going to patrol the, the premises before we, before we go off into our adventure. Hold on one moment. Go ahead, drone. <laughs> Another point is that Amazon actually owns Ring. And so a lot of people are really concerned about the, like Amazon having a drone that's in their house and the security, like, you know, like I don't want Amazon spying on me kind of thing. And Ring's already thought it. They said, hold my tech, I got you. Let me tell you how we figure this out. First of all, end-to-end -end encryption. Ain't nobody gonna see that. That's what it is, end-to-end -end encryption, just like our doorbell with the camera on and all that kind of stuff. It's like, all the only people who can see this stuff is you. That's it. The second thing, as they said that the drone has a noise feature that alerts you when privacy is an issue in the sense of you'll know when the drone is in the air because of the noise feature that has been included in this drone. Oh, you mean the blades. The blades because drones make noise and they're very noisy and you can't sneak a drone around anywhere indoors ever because they wait to make way too much noise. And then you add that the propellers are covered in a cage. If you've never flown a caged drone before, like a Mavic Pro, the original, like they actually sold cages for the blades. The cage made that drone twice as loud because there's twice as many things that can vibrate. Obviously you're getting the noise from the vibrating of the blades themselves, but now there's things around the blades that are vibrating as well that make it louder. I don't think you're gonna have any problems whatsoever knowing this thing is flying in your house, but I feel like it would be really annoying if you're trying to watch a game or like record something, like I don't know, a YouTube channel, and your drone's like, it's time for the patrol. So like I said guys, check it out. It's coming out 2021 if you so choose. 250 bucks for this security feature slash novelty, that could be a good conversation point. Up next, Walmart and Amazon are both really getting serious about the drone game. So Walmart partnered with three different drone delivery companies to do three different kinds of drone deliveries. First one is with DroneUp and Quest Diagnostics. They did COVID-19 tests for people living near the Walmart in Las Vegas. They also, and they're looking to do that again in uh, upstate New York in October because Obviously, it worked really well. The second one was they partnered with Flytrex. And Flytrex, they were delivering groceries and home goods to customers in, in North Carolina. And the last one was a partnership with Zipline to help transport medical supplies in Arkansas. So Walmart is just saying, hey, we're interested, but y'all do this better, so let's just partner with you with things that we need to have delivered. And they're getting involved, which obviously now that they're getting involved means that they're gonna be investing more in it. So we're probably gonna see a lot more involvement of drones with what Walmart is doing, considering that they're really investing heavily in the tech side of things to compete, well, with Amazon. I thought this was a typo, to be fully honest, but apparently this is true. Walmart has fi hired half a million, 500,000 new employees to help fulfill 
all of their online orders ever since March, and you know what March was, was the beginning of COVID, because their online sales have blown up. They're looking like a much more legit competitor for Amazon these days. And Amazon, not to be left out, has also uh, secured their Part 135 certificate, um, which allows them to operate drones commercially, especially out of line of sight, pretty much autonomous flying drones doing deliveries, which is something that only a couple other companies have ever been able to do. Two of them, actually. One of them is Google with their Wing Aviation and the UPS's Flight Forward program. So the 135 is something that I have no intention of ever getting, but this is kind of the FAA's answer to saying, we want to do drone deliveries. How can this happen? They're like, you can get this specific type of license slash waiver that allows you to do that, but we're going to be very strict about how that is. You have to dim come to us and demonstrate that these drones or whatever you're going to use is very safe, there's no public risk, um, and that you're doing all, following all the rules that we set forth. Amazon, Walmart, they're all doing it big. Obviously, Google's in the game because why wouldn't they be Google? And then, of course, the delivery service UPS is in there, and we know FedEx is probably not far behind. So there's going to be a lot of drones in the sky, and this is going to be real interesting times coming forward, so eyes up. Since we're talking about drone deliveries, well, why not deliver a kidney? And that's actually what happened uh, in tech in Vegas. A company called Mission Go has worked with doctors to perform a record-breaking drone flight that delivered a viable kidney 10 miles across the Nevada desert. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, the biggest deal is, is that kidneys are a very valuable asset when it comes to organ transplants because a lot of people need them. And every year, about 3,500 kidneys are discarded because they just go bad because they didn't get put into a body. So a kidney, after being removed from your body, which is right around here, um, has about 36 to 48 hours of still being viable to be able to go in someone else's body and be used. Now, if it doesn't happen in that time, then it gets discarded. That's why, like I said, 3,500 gets discarded a year. There's a Right now, on the wait list, there's like 100,000 people who need kidneys, and we're literally throwing them away. And a lot of it is because we can't transport them fast enough. And drones, they may be able to help. So this test could be a big deal because in 10 miles, in a straight line as a crow flies, is significantly faster than putting it on, I don't know, a bus or having somebody deliver it. Or, you know, sometimes they put people in private jets just to fly there. And unfortunately, you know, putting human beings on aircraft to deliver something super fast can end tragically. And the University of Michigan had to learn that the hard way as they lost some of their researchers to a really tragic, you know, small jet crash because they were trying to deliver these kidneys that possibly could have done been done through a drone. The biggest concern they really had when it came to how this was going to get transported is they weren't able to put a bunch of ice to be able to keep it cold, because obviously you have to keep it cold to be able to keep that 36 to 48 hours. And so they weren't able to put a lot of ice in there because drones have limited payloads, so they were kind of concerned that it wouldn't be able to keep at the temperature it was supposed to be. And they found no degradation, so this could pay, pave the way for future drone deliveries of kidneys that can be able to help save some lives. Up next, a new drone, y'all. It's called an Astro. It's from FreeFly. Now, if you don't know who FreeFly is, that means you're not doing heavy lift drones because what FreeFly, they're the ones who do the Alta systems that are some of the biggest heavy lifters in the game, Alta 6 to Alta 8. My boy Terrence, who was actually interviewed on this, he told us a lot about his Alta 6 and Alta 8 experience. Um, look back to that video to see what he told us about that. But all that to say is they're coming out with a new drone that they had a bunch of different words to describe, like cute. Because normally when their drones are this big, one of them being this big makes it cute. Either way, they're putting out a quadcopter for the first time. This quadcopter is going to carry a Sony A7R4 and other, you know, DSLR. But they're pretty much selling it with the Sony camera. The announcement actually happened an hour ago from where we're filming right now. So I don't know all the details, but what I do know is that they're selling different packages of it. Um, and different packages have different things. The first one doesn't even come with a controller for some reason. But other packages are coming with controllers, gimbals, and even the, the camera itself which I assume comes with the lens because the camera costs $3,500, but that package costs $5,000 extra on top of the other package. So I have to make a lot of assumptions here that it, has, it comes with a real nice lens that's going to work really great for this system. So the price range they gave us from those different models are looking that they're going to be between $8,000 and $15,000 for this drone package. Now, the, one of the things that they're really aiming at here, or a couple of them are, is that they're saying that this drone is going to be able to, as soon as you land, you're going to be able to have it in the air within 90 seconds from wherever you land to be able to get it there. So it's like, oh, this is great for emergency responders, especially in the United States. And I didn't say that on accident. And the reason I'm saying that is because one of the other things they're touting really hard right now, and you notice my hands are doing like this, they're touting really hard is that they are doing this because American drones are a really big deal right now for American government purchases. And those American government purchases are what is being able to encourage ridiculously expensive drones like this one that are not doing anything too special that other drones aren't doing already. Case in point, $15,000. You can have an Inspire 2 with an X5S fully kitted out for the most part 
and be able to do much more than this drone can. Because this drone doesn't even talk about if there's a dual op system or not. This could be a single flyer drone for all we know. They don't say anything, I haven't seen anything about it. Like I said, the, infinite, the announcement is still happening. But the packages don't talk about two controllers. They talk about one controller or no controller. And so if you're gonna be flying this as a single camera op, and it's a $15,000 drone package that has a similar camera to, let's say, a Sony um, uh, Zimus X7, but costs more or the same, I don't see the real value of it. Yeah, it flies a little bit longer. They're saying this has a 30 minute flight time, but it's pretty expensive for what it is, man. Uh, at least in my eyes thus far. Like I still am waiting to be impressed with like, and here's the thing that makes it worth as much as this other drone. Because for me, as, like a dr uh, as a cinematographer, I, I don't think this would be a drone I'd want to go for unless I'm like, I'm only using the Sony A7R for all the things I do forever, which no one has ever said. I guess as like a first responder or something like that, like maybe putting like a thermal camera on it could be a big deal, but then you could just get like a Inspire One with the FLIR camera on it, and that is significantly cheaper. That's a fraction of the cost of this drone. So, and you even could go with the, uh, was it the Autel Evo 2? They have an enterprise version of that that has, it's kind of like a Mavic size drone that has a thermal camera on it as well. That's nowhere near $15,000. So for me, I'm really trying to figure out why this camera costs so much, or why this drone costs so much to be able to do what it does. So I'm really excited to learn that though, because I feel like they, Unless they're simply just saying, we're pricing this so that governments and municipalities buy it because it's American made and we can charge that because that's what they're gonna have to pay because they can't use foreign made drones, then I get it, which slightly hurts my heart because obviously the people like you and me maybe won't be able to play with it. But on the other side of it, like, make your money? All right, and last but not least, another drone partnership. And this drone partnership is between Skydio an Eagle View. Now, Scadio is the drone that my boy from Ready Set Drone, Kelly, let me borrow. Scadio 2, uh, which I had a lot of fun with, that I thought was really cool, to be honest. I actually really, I really enjoyed that drone. I um, was really surprised by the image quality of it and the wells, how well it really could autonomously fly. It's pretty impressive. But they, you know, they're making wins out here because it's an American company that's making an American-made drone, and they made an enterprise version of that drone already that's going to be selling to municipalities. It already is. It's doing great. And Eagle View, on the other hand, is a company that works with construction companies and home like construction and insurance companies that like look at homes to help assess the damage or repairs needed for whatever happens. So like obviously with uh, what's going on with the weather lately, uh, there's going to be a lot more homes damaged um, due to hurricanes because there's so many in the you know in the ocean now and so many things happening that there's going to be a lot more property damage, which means we have to get a lot more efficient at being able to assess what that property damage looks like and how to be able to fix it. And that's kind of what it looks like they're going for is that they're saying, hey, we're going to be able to use these autonomous flight features and the wonderful cameras of what the Scadio does along with the software that these Eagle Guy got Eagle View people have that can really be able to say, look, we can assess a large range of or a single property much faster than people on the ground might be able to do and be able to make a lot of money because if you're able to make things more efficient and save money for a company, then you have a sale. So the big points of this are, number one, this is being called the biggest drone deal in modern history, uh, simply because in the next three years, there's gonna be about 5,000 drones that come out from this. Another thing is that the AI system that Skydio already has, which I already commented on, is ridiculously intuitive. The idea is that this is even gonna be more intuitive, is that somebody who's never even seen a drone before is gonna be able to get handed this drone and just gonna press a button, it's gonna take off, and then just draw a square on a screen of what they want it to take a, take the images of to be able to assess the damage for, and it'll do it all by itself. You're not flying the drone, you're not doing anything. You just tell it where you want it to scan stuff, and it will scan everything. It won't run into anything, I tell you that right now. It ain't gonna run into nothing. Um, and it's gonna be able to get all that footage that you need for that and land itself, and then there you have it. And the, other and the other interesting thing that Eagle View brings to the system is that, yes, the Scadio one is gonna be able to capture all those images um, automatically. And then the Eagle View system is gonna be able to say, like, here's the damage and here's what it might cost. It's gonna be able to literally tell you where the damage is and be able to assess that damage for you in app through, a soft, through the software, which is just insane. All right, Joners, thank you guys so much for checking out this really information-dense version of Droner News. I hope you learned something. I learned a lot researching this. And if you want to see more of them, we got them. And the only way you're going to see those is pretty much by subscribing, by liking, and by following these posts. And as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Droner News, brought to you by Droner Tech and RemotePilot101.com. And make sure you stay fly.